Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q-Blast. I am once again Dr. Jason Fernasiak, and we are here this week with our clinical vignette. As always, we're going to be going through a clinical vignette from beginning to end, highlighting key points which are useful on both the wards and the boards, increasing your, your USMLE scores, and helping you take better care of patients. So with that, let's jump right in. We have a 67-year-old woman who comes to the physician because of palpitations and fatigue. Further evaluation shows atrial fibrillation, and treatment is begun with a medication that acts by inhibiting sodium-potassium ATPase. Three weeks later, she returns to the physician for a follow-up examination with a complaint of yellow-green visual halos, dizziness, and abdominal pain. Her serum drug levels are well above therapeutic range. This patient is at highest risk for developing which of the following? Is it A, acute renal failure, B, cardiac arrhythmia, C, hypokalemia, D, hyponatremia, or E, tonic-clonic seizures? Now, it's important to look here. This is a classic USMLE question. They have not given you the drug that the patient was given, so you have to know what the most appropriate drug to be given in this case was and what the most common side effect of that drug was. In this case, that answer is B, cardiac arrhythmia, as the most common side effect of the medication she was given, which was digoxin. So let's go over some key points of digoxin therapy. First is a cardiac glycoside that directly inhibits cardiac sodium potassium ATPase and leads to indirect inhibition of the sodium calcium exchanger. This increases sodium calcium, which gives the positive inotropic properties of digoxin. It also inhibits neuronal sodium potassium ATPase, which increases the vagal nerve activity and thus will decrease the heart rate. It's a common drug for congestive heart failure because of that inotrophic property and for supraventricular tachycardia because it decreases AV node conduction and, depre and depresses the SA node. Let's review things that go into digoxin toxicity. Some of the early components of toxicity include anorexia, nausea, and changes on electrocardiogram. Some of the more late presentations include disorientation and visual effects, like our patient had with the blurred vision and yellow-green halos. The treatment involves digoxin immunoglobulins, which are directed against the digoxin itself and it binds it and makes it unavailable to bind to the sodium potassium ATPase and facilitates the excretion in the body. You need to, when you're taking care of patients who may have digoxin therapy, check an electrolyte panel. Make sure that if this is an option on the USMLE, you check that. And certainly if you're taking care of a patient on the wards that has digoxin therapy, you do this because hypokalemia can uh, cause digoxin therapy to become more pervasive. Some key takeaway points for taking care of these patients. Remember that digoxin has a narrow therapeutic window and toxicity can easily develop. Toxicity can result in a dysrhythmia, including paroxysmal atrial tachycardia with a two to one block, accelerated junctional rhythms, and a bidirectional ventricular tachycardia or torsades de point. The severity of digoxin toxicity is increased with hypokalemia. That's important to check an electrolyte panel and correct hypokalemia when taking care of patients that have digoxin toxicity. So that's going to be our clinical vignette for this week's lots of good information for you to increase the score on the boards, as well as take care of patients that come into the wards with digoxin toxicity. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak, and we'll see you again next week for another clinical vignette.